We are hanging out today with a very special guest. If you have never come across Samson Mao, you probably stumbled on the wrong channel because he is the man in Bitcoin and he does many other things as well. He actually can play guitar and he is the founder of Pixelmatic, which we're going to talk about also. He is currently the CEO of Jan3. And I'm like a schoolgirl right now. I'm just so thrilled that you're here and hanging out. Samson, how are you today? I'm pretty good. Thanks for having me on your show, Mike. It's uh, an honor. And I just want to note that I played the guitar just for you. I haven't played since high school, but I did it just for Lightning Ventures. What he's talking about here is, is Satoshi Rakamoto. And I didn't know that Samson was actually the main draw. He's like the star. When we did this in Prague, he, he was requested quite a bit. And so we pulled off this amazing Satoshi Rakamoto. If you were there, it was a ton of fun. And we actually managed to get a little bit of a sound check. And Samson left. He left the venue. And I thought he was just going to go for a minute, but he like went and showered. All right. And then we started opening the doors and getting people in. And all of a sudden it's 5,000 where's Samson's. And then Canute left. So he said he was going to go grab a bite, which to me is like around the corner and he's gone. And there was no <laughs> band. There was no band for a minute. He was a very popular guy. So what happens when there's no band? You end up with this guy right here. We had uh, Giacomo who did a karaoke and we managed to buy time until the star of the show got there. But it was a bunch of fun and we're trying to do one in Prague. Uh, I didn't know Samson was a rocker back in the day with grunge uh, in the 90s. Did you used to be in a band? Just a high school band. Just a high school band? Just a high school band. But Newt is a, a professional rocker. He's in music videos and stuff. He's the real star of that show. I'm just bad. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a ton of fun. It was it was it was fun in Miami. It was fun in Prague. We're going to see if we can pull it off for uh Honey Badger maybe. Uh I don't know. It's a lot of fun and there's a bunch of people who can play and that's the cool thing about Bitcoin, right? You get everyone together and you never know the talents. You put a few chess boards out, people are crazy, put some music gear there and people get up and do their thing. All right. Samson here he is with President Bukele of El Salvador. I was there that day. I was way in the back. It was crazy. It was, there was a lot of people there. But he was on the stage. He had plenty of room. So be sure to connect with the man right here. And we're going to talk about Jan 3. Now, Jan 3 is actually very private right now. Very private. And we do these videos for our investors. I'm not very good at plugging, but Lightning Ventures, if you want to invest in the best Bitcoin companies that are out there, hopefully be supportive, read updates from companies and all that good stuff and get started with angel investing. You can do that in our syndicate. Not every deal is available in the syndicate, but we were lucky enough to sneak in through our first fund. I know that it probably wouldn't have went on without that big check from Lightning Ventures. Um, but we, we make up for it with heart. So we're cranking out a fund update and hadn't caught up. Thought we would do a two for one here. What is going on uh, with the stealth mode? What is up with this? It's not really stealth mode. It's just we're short handed and uh, we haven't finished the website. So right now it's just on me. We've almost got it done. I just need to finish writing a bit more content and we'll probably put it up live in a week or so. But we've just been busy. There's been higher priority stuff. So as we're building a wallet as well, we recently restarted development of Aqua. So I think that was like three, four months ago. So we've been doing a bit of hiring. You might have seen our job postings on Bitcoin and jobs and other places, but we've been just ramping up the team and onboarding designers and engineers. Yeah, the website is important, but it fell as a secondary priority. So. First priority is Aqua and getting that launched, hopefully in the next four to six weeks. And then the website will be out in a week or so. But uh, yeah, we're not trying to be sneaky and stealthy. It's just resources. Cool. We're definitely going to, to talk about Aqua here and some of the other things that Jan3 is up to. So 
The mission is to accelerate hyper Bitcoin. All right. Bitcoin will fix the world. What exactly does Jan 3 do? And obviously, this is the first uh, product here that's out. I actually have it on my iPhone. Why don't you talk a little bit about the long term goals of Aqua? Sure. So the one you have right now is the original version of Aqua. That's by Blockstream and it's still on their account. So if you download it, it says from Blockstream. While I was still at Blockstream, I had started working on Android version with a, a dev team. And when I decided to start Jan3, I asked Adam, can we take over development of Aqua? And he said, sure. So we brought that over and we paused development for a good while. But we started up recently. But the goal of Aqua is to create a wallet for Latin America and the global south. So it's meant to be both a Bitcoin and a stablecoin wallet. So as Aqua supports both Bitcoin and Liquid, a Bitcoin sidechain can have assets like Tether natively to that wallet. And one of our sub goals is to get a lot of the Tether stablecoin volume off of Tron and Ethereum and into Liquid. Because as Bitcoiners, we're not fans of coin chains, but the reality is the bulk of Tether stablecoin transactions are still on those chains. And the, I think the reason for that is simply because there has been no Bitcoin wallet that's given people access to Tether. So they really have no choice but to use wallets that are Ethereum based or Tron based to transact stable coins because they still seek out this dollar denominated value, which for them, it, it, a dollar is like a Bitcoin almost. They may not understand Bitcoin, but they know what a dollar is because their own currencies natively are inflating rapidly and losing value. So. Our goal is, with Aqua is that we're going to take some of that volume away and move it into Liquid. And one of the barriers, I think, for Liquid adoption has been that you have to get Liquid Bitcoin first before you can transact any asset in Liquid. So one of our solutions is we've integrated a service called Liquid Taxi that will allow you to pay a stablecoin transaction on Liquid in that stablecoin. So you can pay for a Tether transaction using Tether. And what that means is effectively, if you're in Venezuela, you can just receive liquid Bitcoin. And if you're paying someone else, then you can send that liquid Bitcoin by paying the fees in liquid Bitcoin. And I think that removes a big barrier to accessing the liquid network. But on top of that, we also have swap. So you'll be able to move in between liquid Bitcoin to USDT and back. We'll support lightning as well. But we also have support for bridging across chains. So we integrate another service called SideShift, which allows you to receive Tron Tether or Ethereum Tether, and you get to keep it in Liquid Tether on your Aqua wallet. And when you send out it's the same way, you can send someone through to their Tron address or Ethereum address, but you only ever keep Liquid Tether. So it's like a, a wallet that gives you the best of the Bitcoin ecosystem which is Bitcoin and Lightning, plus stable coins, which people in the global South need. And they don't need to hold that stable coin or have Tron or Ethereum for gas fees. They just need Bitcoin and Liquid Tether. So we're definitely fans of Liquid and Blockstream and are very bullish on Liquid. We've made a number of investments in that space already. JW and Kyle from Digital, super excited about that. I'm not sure if you worked with them with the Blockstream mining note during that process. Mm -hmm. And the people at Volpem Ventures that are working on Fuji on Liquid, I think they actually were very responsible for the Liquid Taxi or a big part of that. Yeah. So that's really cool then. So that would explain what's up with this because when you click to buy Wire, I think Wire is out of business. I'm not sure. I think I read that. I thought they were going to be sold for... A, uh, bolt. I don't think that acquisition went through. So when do you think the next gen app will be coming out? The uh, next, the Aqua wallet? We're hoping yeah. in four to six weeks. We've got most of it done already. And it's just about fine tuning the UI and fixing a few things. The liquid taxi service, our CTO is fixing it up. It hasn't been maintained. So there's some things that are broken. There's just a lot of little tiny things we have to fix up and then we can push it out on the app store. And we're thinking we'll do some early access. So of course you, Mike, and the Lightning Ventures guys will get test flight and an APK if you're an Android, but we'll probably bring in some of the people from the Jan3 communities and test it out first. And then we'll 
make a big push on the app stores. So we have an uh, probably slightly outdated roadmap here, but Lightning is on that. And I believe that's any day now. So with that release, Lightning is implemented. Yeah, so it will have Lightning. We've done an integration with Bolts, Bolts Exchange. So if you know how Moon Wallet works, it's really a on-chain wallet that does submarine swaps with Lightning. So your balance is kept in Bitcoin, but your on and off ramps are through a Lightning service provider. We're doing the same thing for Aqua, except that your balance is kept in liquid Bitcoin. So the fees are not going to vary based on chain congestion or on chain usage. It'll be more or less stable. So the, uh, the cost to send and receive is always going to be the same as a liquid transaction, which is just a few cents. But you have the benefit of having that extra privacy because Liquid has confidential transactions. So the, you're just, basically, you go from privacy to privacy, right? You're lightning to Liquid back and forth. So it's all private and confidential. And I think that's a, a big benefit to users, whether they know it or not, right? You can recommend Aqua to your friends in developing markets. They can avoid using altcoin wallets and they can just keep Liquid USDT. And they can still transact with Lightning and not have to worry about any privacy leaks or anything like that. Cool. So based on the top secret deck that I was lucky enough to see, that is one part uh, of Jan 3 and also is a mining component. So I'm going to leave it to you because I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. Uh, but what's going on with Jan 3 and their goals uh, with mining? That's still in development, but there might be something that we can announce in a few months. But for now, the mining component is really advising nation states on what they can do in relation to Bitcoin mining. And of course, if they need our help, we're happy to help them out um, on a number of fronts, procuring hardware, uh, helping set up their mining sites or anything to do with mining in general. But as we push for Bitcoin bonds, if you're familiar with the structure, half of the bond should go to some revenue generating activity. And that would be mining in most cases or mining Bitcoin in most cases. So it's natural that we would want to be able to help them on that front to set up their operations. So is that all you can say about mining right now? Um, that's it. Okay. All right. Very cool. All right. Moving right along. It's fun. Okay. It's fun. It's rare. It's digital art. No, it's not ordinals. It is <laughs> a rare Toshi. What is rare Toshi? We, we actually did a call with Adam a while ago. He's a beast. He's an awesome guy. So what's going on with this? Yeah, so Rare Toshi was the project that was started during my time at Blockstream. It was just creating NFTs on Liquid, NFT marketplace. And challenge was back in the day, most of the Bitcoin artists had to use an Ethereum-based platform to mint their Bitcoin art. And that was not something they liked and enjoyed doing. So we thought, Liquid can create NFTs too. So what is an NFT? It's just a non-fungible token. It's become a bit of a bad word because it's used by a lot of Ethereum and altcoin projects to scam people. And they create and sell things for multiples of Bitcoin and more, millions of dollars sometimes too. So that's why I think people consider NFTs a scam. But at the root of it, it's just a piece of technology. It is literally a non-fungible token. And you can issue these on Liquid because it's a one-off token. So if you imagine Tether, it's a fungible token. You can exchange one USDT with another USDT on Liquid. But if you create separate issuances, then of course that one token is fungible. So it's really just a token. And I think it's good if artists can mint their artwork and allow trading of that artwork on this platform without having to go into Ethereum especially if they're a Bitcoin artist. So what we did was we built this platform or Adam built most of it. And it's just a place, a marketplace where you can buy and sell art from Bitcoin artists. And I think the angle at which we're going for is that it's digital patronage. Actually, Adam back coined that term because it's really patronizing the artists that you like. It's not necessarily for an artist to sell a collection of generative art and make a lot of money. If you look at the prices that things sell on Rotoshi, they're pretty reasonable. It's 10, 20, 30 bucks. So it's like a way for you to support artists you like and show that you support these artists. It's a very organic ecosystem. It's not artificial and there's no VC money flowing into it. 
And of course, it's not as big as those platforms, but it's really just meant to be a community initiative where you can be an artist, make Bitcoin art, and then people can support you and basically buy your art from you and show it off. So in a company that is focused on hyper Bitcoinization and could be meeting with world leaders and advising them, it's a, it's an odd piece of the business, but I love it. And it's super fun. Do you have any big plans for this? Was it something that Blockstream just wanted to spin out or was this, is this a, a, a big part of the business? Not really. We did it as a community service and I just said that we can take it over. Actually, we're not doing that much. We're, our, our marketing team is running the socials for it, but Adam Salties is still maintaining it. And some of the Blockstream guys still help out from time to time too. So it's really a community initiative for Bitcoin artists. It's not meant to be a revenue generating thing or there's no design on it to make it a big open C type project, but it could be that if uh, people wanted to work on it, but it's still open source and it's a collaborative thing from a few companies. All right. So we've got the Aqua wallet with Tether. By the way, it's very difficult for American people to have a, a wallet uh, with Tether. I'm not sure why that is. Um, I think this would be the only go to be honest with you. You can use Blockstream Green, and I think- Use Blockstream Green. That is my mobile wallet. Yeah, it's solid. And Aqua is also built on GDK. So Green is built on GDK because you know, they made GDK, of course, but Aqua is also using GDK too. So you have that same robustness and security that to get with GDK development. But you're right that it is hard for people to get liquid assets in the US. And I think that's just because there's no exchange that supports liquid assets right now in the US. You have Bitfinex, BitC, BDC Turk, and a number of others around the world that support it, but they're not US based. So it has always been an issue about helping people in the US get LBTC and USDT on liquid, but we're hoping that changes. And recently Brad Mills has been doing a lot of marketing for liquid, <laughs> even though he's not directly involved with liquid, but he seems to be a big fan and supporter of it, but he's like saying to, uh, uh a bunch of exchanges that they should implement support for liquid. Um, and it's possible that Kraken or Gemini or one of the US based ones do that. And that would open the door for Americans to easily get access to liquid assets. But the wallet side, anybody can get a green wallet and anyone will be able to get an aqua wallet. And there's more and more wallets supporting liquid every day these days, like uh, peach Bitcoin is too now. But of course, that's not really US focused. But yeah, there's a, there are more wallets. I think there's another one that announced recently too. It was called, I can't remember for the sake of my life, but it was like two weeks ago, they announced that it's a liquid wallet and they support other, other side chains like RSK and whatnot too. All right. They should, they should update that green wallet to have a big, nice tether logo there to remove confusion. All right. Moving right along. Nation state. Bitcoin adoption. That's the business. That is your business. What a fun business to invest in and what a fun business to run. I have to start in El Salvador, but just really quick, high level from El Salvador to here. I know there's a lot you can't talk about. We can't even go to the website without a password, but whatever you can say about nation state adoption. It's what we're known for. So oftentimes people say Jan3 is a nation state Bitcoin company and people reach out to us because we've done a lot of work in the space. So it's a, definitely an interesting position to have. And it's also an important thing to push forward as well, because I can see if there are not more countries that adopt Bitcoin, if El Salvador is the only one, then there's a risk that it could stop because the organizations that be the the IMFs and world banks, they could exert a lot of pressure. But if you get more countries to adopt a Bitcoin standard, then El Salvador is not alone. So there will be allies, Bitcoin allies for these countries. And I, I guess that is really our goal to make sure that the Bitcoin adoption movement keeps on gaining momentum. We've had countries, but we've had cities and uh, autonomous regions declare Bitcoin adoption, which is quite meaningful in, in my view. Because it's not every country that will be able to adopt the Bitcoin standard. El Salvador is a bit of an outlier in that sense because the president was a Bitcoiner before he became the president. So you have a, an advantage there. Uh, whereas in other places, they might be learning about Bitcoin from, for the first time. So you have a, a larger battle to push Bitcoin through. 
And also the dynamic of uh, government in El Salvador is that they have a majority of Congress. So they can pass these laws without um, an opposition party uh, putting a stop on that, which is the case for a lot of governments. So that makes El Salvador very special and it allowed them to adopt it very quickly. Other countries, I think, will come around in the next five years, but it is a longer battle. And that's also why these cities that adopt Bitcoin in autonomous regions that say they, they want to adopt the Bitcoin strategy are very interesting because they are more agile, more nimble, and they can move a lot quick, a lot more quickly. One example is Prospera in Honduras. It's a special economic zone and they have made Bitcoin legal tender. And we announced that in Miami a couple of years ago. And then you have Madeira, which is an autonomous region of Portugal that's said that they are working towards adopting Bitcoin, but they're still part of the EU in Portugal. So they can't just make Bitcoin legal tender, but they're working on pushing for Bitcoin adoption. So that's like a little foothold in the EU. Then in Switzerland, you have Lugano, where Paulo Arduino and uh, Tether guys and Bitfinex guys are working with the city for onboarding a ton of merchants. So you can spend Bitcoin and Tether everywhere in the city. So there is already a lot of movement and you have at the same time elections all over the world, specifically in North America and South America in the next five years where you're going to see a lot of turnover. And Bitcoin is becoming a key part of political discourse in these regions. So you have Argentina with Javier Mille, who's uh, talked about Bitcoin quite often. And other countries in that region too have uh, Bitcoin friendly candidates as well. So I can just see the next five years being very pivotal in terms of Bitcoin adoption around the world. So a big part of Jan 3 is coming off the heels of advising Bukele and being a big part, an architect of the bonds out there with the Bitcoin city, your role in that. What's that like now? What is the temperature like with that now? How involved are you in that project? I helped them design the Bitcoin bond offering back in the day when I was still at Blockstream. And then, of course, as we announced it at the Bitcoin City debut, and you were there, right? <laughs> and they've done a number of things to pave the way for this. One of those being the digital securities laws that we advised them on. So that would allow them to issue this Bitcoin bond or the volcano bond. And those laws, I think, were passed about three or four months ago. So they technically can start to do the Bitcoin bond issuance, but I haven't been spending too much time on El Salvador these days. They're already in good hands. Like the Bitfinex guys are very hands-on and they're working closely with the government. Also, Max and Stacy are there driving a lot of things day to day. So I've been focusing a lot more of my time on other places to um, educate them about what Bitcoin bonds could do. So for example, we've talked to the government in Costa Rica about Bitcoin bonds and that was interesting for them because they have a lot of hydropower. We've spoken with the governor of West Java in Indonesia about Bitcoin bonds too, because Indonesia is very rich in geothermal power, but uh, they also have hydro as well. So they have a lot of opportunity to do a lot of things with Bitcoin. And I think he actually might be the next president or vice president of Indonesia. So again, that time frame of the next five years being very crucial, we're engaging with the next heads of state before the heads of state and trying to pave the way and build that foundation with the expectation that something can be done once they are in power. Most of what you read here or see is negative about El Salvador and everything that they're doing. So when you're meeting with these other world leaders, what's the temperature like with them? Are they looking up to this? This is something that they want to do. They're engaging you in this conversation. They're viewing this as a success. Because we don't get that story. Which story? If you read the mainstream media, I think it's actually warming up. If you check some of the coverage on their, their tried five bonds, they're being presented in a good light because they've been buying back their debt ahead of schedule. So I think it's, it was the case maybe a year and a half ago where coverage of El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption was very negative. And also the IMF was pushing, pushing against it, pushing back against it very heavily too. So I think the tides have turned a bit and El Salvador is, 
becoming more of a success story in the media. And other countries are definitely looking at it that way too. We get a lot of questions about El Salvador and they want to know more about what happened and how it worked there. We are just relaying that information. And fortunately for Gen3, our CMO, Edwin Rivas, is Salvadoran, so he can talk from a firsthand perspective about all the policies and what Bitcoin has done for his country. So I think they are looking at it in general as a way for them to figure out what they want to do too, because El Salvador did everything that you could possibly do with Bitcoin adoption, right? Mining Bitcoin, buying Bitcoin as a treasury asset, Bitcoin law, et cetera. So other countries may not want to do all of those things or may not be able to do all of those things, but they can definitely do a subset of, or at least one of them. And I think actually mining, which we talked about earlier, is very interesting because there is no risk about, there is no risk for IMF pushback on that because you're not treading on their toes. You're just encouraging the consumption of energy and the build out of energy infrastructure. And these could be pu public private partnerships too, which would stimulate the local economy as well. So I think that's a safe bet if you don't want to ruffle their feathers to get into Bitcoin. And it would still be very meaningful because once you have that infrastructure in place and you have companies that enter the market to mine, then you can start to do more. So it's just a, a foothold in that regard. Is it more getting them to turn on the mining or is it more to adopt it? It's all adoption, I think. So if they encourage Bitcoin mining, the rest has to come. So if you take Indonesia as an example, Bitcoin is prohibited by law for being used for payments, but you can't really encourage people to come there and mine Bitcoin unless that is addressed. So I think there's always the tendency where people want to have the perfect solution from day one, but oftentimes that's not really possible. So I would say if they want to encourage mining, we should help them in that regard, bring the miners in, bring in the the big U.S. companies, bring in the ASIC manufacturers, et cetera, start that industry. And as that starts to gain traction and it becomes a success story, then we can work on other things like repealing the law that prevents you from spending Bitcoin or carve out a special region where you can spend Bitcoin. But oftentimes perfect is the enemy of good enough. And we have to take what we have and the opportunities we have as Bitcoiners and not just say, I'm writing off Indonesia because they won't let me spend Bitcoin because it's a complicated world and you have to navigate these things in a pragmatic fashion. So exciting. So there's so many things that we can't talk about or that you're not going to talk about, and that's okay. We're talking about Jan 3. We're wrapping it up here. He's a very busy guy. He said these things, not me. Madeira, El Salvador, Costa Rica. Download the Aqua Wallet. Get yourself some tether. Look out for that new update. Buy some volcano bonds when they go live. Seriously, though, what can you talk about? Like, how does this make money? Like, straight up, like you're going around the world orange pilling countries. Can you dumb that down in a way to talk about the revenue and how big of an opportunity that is? The plan was just to keep raising money from Lightning Ventures. That big check, that's what got you across the line. Let's be real. Yeah. So we, we have a, a new product or a new division we're going to announce in the next month, uh, maybe two months. But that will be a revenue generating business. And of course, we can't talk, to, talk about it just yet. But Aqua will generate money off of the swaps and selling Bitcoin, much like other wallets in the space. So that will be a revenue stream. Um, on the nation state front, it couldn't be a consulting deal. But our hope is to focus on the issuance of Volcano Bonds, where we can charge a, a few basis points off of an issuance for compensation for helping them design and architect these things. That will just go back into the business and finance more Bitcoin adoption. So it's like a, a self-propelling uh, flywheel, hopefully. Cool. All right. So when he's not doing all that, he's playing guitar. And uh, maybe we'll see him again in Prague uh, for, I'm sorry, in, um, at Honey Badger. All right, cool, man. Listen, thanks for hanging. I know you can't talk about much. Thanks for letting us uh, ride along with you uh, and be your favorite investor. And um, really looking forward to, to seeing what comes next. Yeah, I'll keep you updated as soon as I can tell you something. All right. Thanks, Samson. Thanks, Mike.